with kids, I mean, you've got it's it's really about separating out what is what's what's a normal interest in fire lighting or in, in fire, I guess, and what's a problematic interest. I mean, I think you know probably a lot of this this kind of goes back, I think, to a story that I've told before, where I put a I was I was delivering a workshop to. Um, 180 clinical psychologists at the clinical college um, benefit about 13 years ago now. And I put up a, on the slide a whole bunch of behaviours that we commonly see in children and young people. And I asked them to consider uh, what, diagnose, what diagnostic formulations that they would come up with based on, you know, if they had a child who was exhibiting, the, um, I think I said th two, two thirds or three quarters of those behaviours. And I got all sorts of diagnostic formulations, but no one said no diagnosis. And the re my point was, um, normality and abnormality are differentiated by frequency, intensity, and duration. So a lot of behaviours that we, that kids, that a lot of a lot of the behaviours of concerns we see in a, in children that we're concerned about you see those behaviours in the normal population anyway. Children, you know, perhaps particularly boys, have a bit of a fascination with bonfires and playing with fire and, and so on. But it's when it's... So you, you've, I think what you've got to do then is just think about, well, why are they doing it? Is this just a normal interest and fascination that, that perhaps boys... I've had girls who are firelighters as well. That's probably a bit of a... I haven't got data to support it, but that reminds me a little bit of a publication back in 1993, a very long time ago, of a study we did um, looking into music preference amongst teenagers and suicidality. And what we found is that, um, and things change all the time, but but what we, we found an interesting effect where girls who had a very, a, very much a less common interest, music interest, you know, like a particular style of music. Uh, at that time, it was rock and heavy metal. It was heavy metal music. They were the ones who were more likely to um, be exhibiting suicidality. Point being that um, um, girl, you know, to the extent that probably an interest in fire is more common in boys if if girls are messing with fire, they that would be I, I would see that as probably a less common interest and they, and perhaps a bit more a bit more interesting than just you know dismissing it as normal childhood behaviour as such. Um, the things that I would so, so if but if a behaviour is relatively common, um, but but children and young people, but certain children and young people are quite worried about it. Then I think it really it goes to frequency, intensity, and duration, as which I've talked about, but also the reason. So is the, is the reason they're doing it different? I think fire lighters, what, um, probably displaced anger, a lot of anger. Uh, and and powerlessness, they're the two. They, I guess they're the two. Two. I probably could think of some more reasons, but but my first, I guess, port of gold call would be around anger, uh, uh, displaced anger, so anger and hurt, and feelings of powerlessness, perhaps attention, the attention that it gets you know, feeling of of being invisible, certainly adult adult offenders, firelight offenders, but you know, not not being noticed, being not being important, not feeling important to people. Um it, it's the sort of behaviour that that outside of just playing with a with a bonfire is likely to garner significant concern and attention. So you, we, in those circumstances, I'd be thinking about um, what, what sort of, what's a typical experience of concern and attention. Um, so there's, yeah, so I've added to the tally. I think, you know, definitely um, anger, 
which comes out that can come out through destructiveness, yeah, powerlessness, feeling unimportant, um, feeling a lack of care and concern. That's five now. They, they, they would be my hypotheses. Um, so to the extent that that it might be an uncommon interest in girls or less common interest in girls, it might be a, a flag that there's more going on for that girl. So anyway, the point being that um, normality and abnormality are differentiated by frequency, intensity, and duration. But I would, all, but also say you've got to consider the reason. Is this just normal interest and exploratory behaviour, or is there something else going on? And those, as I said, those something else going on would be anger, power, um, attention, feeling invisible, yeah, lack of care and concern. So yeah, so in terms of working with children like young people, I think everyone you know would be, but there there would be plenty of practitioners who would see the firelighting as the problem. Yeah, yeah well, it is a problem. So um, so amongst the res responses to that would be to admonish the young person, to sanction them in some way, and the problem with that, of course, is that that it runs the risk of only exacerbate, exacerbating certain reasons for why they do it. So you end up in that scenario where what, what are you going to do? Try and scare them straight, which, which, which is a common system response. You know, you're going to go, you'll end up um, hurting someone. You'll end up, you might hurt yourself. You'll, you'll end up going to jail. You know, no, you'll end up, um, with words that reflect that you know people won't like you or love you, and you'll be an outsider in in society. You, you know there'll be words around that, all, all of which probably you know confirms and exacerbates the under the underlying stuff that's giving rise to the behaviour. So, um, so I think you, you, my my view about these things is a lot of the, a lot of the trauma. I, I was responding to something only this morning, but a lot of a lot of the trauma informed commentary and content out there, in my view, my experience, really says you know you've got to respond to the underlying reason, um, which I agree with. But I think you, you you've got to do both. You you got to got to respond to the behaviour and the reason for the behaviour. Otherwise, people will look at you. This is this is. This was my experience of, of, of talking about responding to the reason for the behavior over a period of time. People just looked at me like I was mad. Like I was, because it's so foreign to not also address the behavior. And I, so I think, I think young people need to know that the behavior is not, um, is not acceptable, but they also need to know that 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 we we understand and will respond to the reasons why they're exhibiting that. Well, they need to experience us understanding and responding to those reasons. And and authorities, including referring authorities, including parents and and so on, really need to know that we also take the behaviour seriously. Um, otherwise, they, they they'll pull their children out, and you know, or they'll pull the children out and take them somewhere where 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 the the um, therapeutic service is taking the behaviour seriously, as such. For related information about caring for children and young people who are recovering from a tough start to life, I would refer you to my other videos and also information that can readily be found on my web and blog sites. If you took something useful from this video, please consider liking it and subscribe to my channel. That way you will be notified of new videos as I upload them.